Jesus ascends into heaven before the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the disciples. With Jesus in heaven, a new era has begun. On The Bible Brief. Have you donated to the Bible Literacy Foundation? We'd love for you to become a part of the Bible Lit team as we make Bible learning content. Want to donate today? Check out the link in the show notes. The last 50 days have been some of the greatest of their lives, full of amazing and profound experiences of the risen Messiah. Jesus had shown himself to so many, showing the scars on his hands and feet, showing his renewed body, and breaking bread in a meal. He'd taught them more about the kingdom of God, and he'd clarified things that the disciples just couldn't understand before his resurrection. Their teacher was back, And just as he was before his death and resurrection, so now, even more so, he was representative of restoration. It was as if everything that touched him was in some way renewed by its creator. Diseases left, bleeding stopped, and life took the place of decay. Nothing demonstrated this fact more than the resurrection, and it was only the beginning. Just as Jesus had taught them, There was a day coming when resurrection would be the destiny of everyone. Some to an eternal life with God, and some to eternal death separated from God. Jesus was the first fruits of a righteous harvest, a harvest of abundance that would be to the praise and glory of God. Jesus was the beginning of the restoration. But now, Jesus was gone. The eleven disciples all remembered gathering at the Mount of Olives near that garden where Jesus faced such agony on the night before his death. Yet at this gathering only ten days ago, it was an occasion of much more joy. Jesus had led them to this place, and when they arrived, he lifted his hands and began to bless them. Perhaps sensing that something pivotal was about to happen, the disciples asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Surely this question had been burning in their thoughts during the years of ministry with Jesus, and even more so since his resurrection. They knew that he was the king of Israel, and they knew that he was bound to sit on the throne of David forever in Jerusalem. So the question was natural enough, even if the answer was unexpected. Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when He had said these things, as they were looking on, He was lifted up, and a cloud took Him out of their sight. Jesus was suddenly just gone lifted up into the clouds and into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. But he didn't leave them with a non-answer, just one that they probably wished was more clear. He essentially told them, the Father has fixed a time in history when the kingdom will return to Israel. But that time isn't now. Now it's time for something else. It's time for you to be my witnesses to the earth by the power of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is coming, just not yet. And that's what Jesus left them with. Not with a timetable on his return, but with a mission to precede it. A mission to commence when the Holy Spirit was to come upon them. And so the disciples worshipped Jesus there. They departed the Mount of Olives and went back to Jerusalem to worship God in the city and in the temple. Now since that day of Jesus' ascension into heaven, It's been about ten days. Ten days of expectation of prayer and of fellowship. Days in which the deceased Judas Iscariot was replaced by a man named Matthias to re-complete the twelve as witnesses to the resurrection. Many others had gathered there in the upper room with the twelve, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, his brothers, and the women who had followed him in his ministry. All these were devoting themselves to prayer, until suddenly it happened. (laughs) 
Suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. God had sent his promise, just as he said, and it was today of all days. On the same feast day called Pentecost, which commonly celebrated the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, something else was being given to the disciples. With the sound of a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Spirit had come upon them, and they suddenly began to speak in languages that they didn't know. This spectacle began to draw a crowd. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and Libya, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. Imagine just being there to hear this event. All these men and women suddenly speaking foreign languages, telling everyone around them about God's amazing works in Jesus. They'd been filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were showing all around them the power of God. Just as John the Baptist had baptized with water to precede Jesus, so now Jesus was following that up with the baptism by the Holy Spirit. The disciples were washed now from the inside out, renewed in their hearts by the Holy Spirit, and sent on a mission of renewal to the world. All the people around them were amazed and perplexed, and they said to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood." before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For King David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. 
For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. With remarkable precision and courage, the disciple Peter preaches the first sermon of the church to the crowd in Jerusalem gathered before him. And in this sermon, he makes three critical points. One, what's happening here was foretold in times past, just as the prophet Joel proclaimed, in the last days God would pour out his spirit. This is what has happened today. Two, the death of Jesus was according to the plan of God even though it was done through the free choices of evil men. But just as his death was part of the plan, so also was the resurrection. And three, in the resurrection, God declared that Jesus is indeed Lord and Messiah. Though you all crucified him, he is risen and he's coming back to rule. You can imagine the crowds listening in awe to this Galilean fisherman preach the scriptures just after seeing the miracle of the many languages given by the Spirit. Perhaps even some in the crowd were among those who shouted for Jesus to be crucified only 50 days prior. In any case, the reaction to the sermon was perhaps even greater than Peter might have expected. When the crowd heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness, and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Something big is happening in Jerusalem. The mighty rushing wind that came into that upper room continued to rush into the hearts of the people. The Holy Spirit has come, and the mission is just getting started. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation, dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible.